So let's go to uh, Richard Wolf. We got a video of him. He's on David Paxman's show. We know David Paxman, right? Pretty well. It's actually on Kyle Kalinsky's show, who's showing a segment from the Dave Paxman show. So the leftists are cooperating to get Richard Wolf in front of as many people as possible. Ugh. All right. So let's. Oh, I need my head, my headphones. Let's put this on. Let's listen to Richard. We probably won't get by uh, more than a couple of seconds before I have to stop him because of all the falsehoods you're speaking. Here we go. Whoops. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button in the wrong place. Why in the world were we unprepared? We had companies that can produce masks and gloves and ventilators and all of that, but they didn't do it. And I know why. I'm an economist. What I study, it isn't profitable. No company wants to produce masks uh, by the millions, store them in warehouses around the country where the population is concentrated, make sure that they are clean, make sure that they don't deteriorate, replace those that do, uh, watch the whole thing, and then you never know when the next virus will be. Will you have to sit on all of this for two years, for six years, or for 20 years? So it's not profitable. It's not a rat. So no. So the first example is, well, we weren't prepared. We didn't have PPE. We didn't have masks. We didn't have all these things. All these things that he says in should have been produced by the private sector because the private sector has the manufacturing, has all that. Of course, he doesn't believe a private sector should even exist. But wait a minute. In the world in which we live, not my capitalist utopia and not his capitalist hell, in the world in which we live, who is responsible for those things? Whoops. Who has actually positioned itself to be responsible for these things? Who takes on the responsibilities of so-called public health and dealing in public health crises? Who has said, don't worry, we got this. We are responsible for providing all this stuff. It's not the private sector. The private sector has not taken on that responsibility. You're right. There's no profit in it. Not the way the market's structured today. So who has? Well, government has. Government has said, we, the central planners, the brilliant central planners, the ones that Richard Wolf would like to hand over the entire freaking economy to, not just one sector, the entire thing to. No, no, we... The central planners will take care of providing. We have strategic reserves. We have, we have warehouses. We can take care of providing PP&E. We don't want the private sector to do this. Indeed, we will dictate what hospitals invest in. We will dictate how many hospital beds are available. We will dictate how much pp and &E hospitals can buy because we don't want them to be wasteful because if they buy too much or they expand too large or if they have too many hospital beds, then what is going to happen? Cost of health care will go up and we, the government, will have to bear those costs and we, the government, will be blamed for it. So how can you blame? What dishonesty, what naked dishonesty is to blame private industry for the clear-cut failure of government. Now, we could discuss what would happen in a free market, that is, how these provisioning would happen in a free market. But the idea that once the government has taken over the entire space in which you function, i.e. provisioning for health care, particularly something like a pandemic, private industry should still provide it, should still, you know, have stores. I mean, that's absurd, and Richard Wolf knows that. This is why he's so damn dishonest. So it's, it's, it's just... Now, what would happen in a free market? So who would have an incentive in a free market where, under true capitalism where the government was not storing PP&E and masks and all these other things? Who would actually provide this stuff? How would it come into being? Well, first, hospitals 
would be much better prepared because there is profit in being prepared because when if, if you're prepared, more patients come to you during a crisis, you treat them better, you get paid, you're not providing a service for free. So hospitals, indeed, good hospitals like the Cleveland, Cleveland Clinic and other hospitals had plenty of reserve beds. They had emergency plans to take over take over motels, to take over uh, other buildings that were vacant and turn them into emergency hospitals. Indeed, the private sector, the hospitals that truly behave like private enterprises were, were well, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, had the capacity to, to deal with this virus very well. And if you add to that, if you add to that, the fact that once the demand was real, once it was clear that there was demand, what happens under capitalism? Well, if demand is high for face masks, let's say, and the supply is limited, what happens? Prices go up. If prices go up, what incentive does that create? It creates incentive to produce a lot more. And if you produce a lot more, then that's how you solve the problem of shortage of supply. And indeed, even under COVID, even though prices were controlled, even though they didn't have full pricing power, manufacturers converted lines from, from, from cosmetics to, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, hand sanitizers. They converted lines from making dresses to making masks. They converted lines from making uh, all kinds of other stuff to making surgical masks and, and uh, what do you call them, N95 masks or whatever they're called. So the private sector responded brilliantly and provided almost instant supply in spite of the fact that the government did not allow and hospitals did not allow, and I mean the medical system did not allow, which is run by the government, for the pricing system to work appropriately. So we got shortages where we shouldn't have had shortages. But in capitalism, you don't get shortages. Prices adjust and supply adjusts in an emergency, plus hospitals, insu insurance companies have huge incentives when the government is out of the way to store healthcare provisioning for times of emergency. Any businessman will tell you, if you think long-term, these are the kind of choices you make and these are the kind of investments you make. And the businesses that don't make these kind of choices, they're the ones who go bankrupt. They're the ones who get sued during an emergency and they disappear. And the market reinforces the long-term planners, reinforces those who would actually plan for the future, provision for the future, have supplies ready. So, Christian, thank you for the support. Appreciate that. So don't give me that. Don't take the fact. I mean, it's so dishonest when the government is set up to do this, tells the world it's going to do it, has reserves that it's responsible for. And they're not enough. They're badly allocated. They're badly distributed. And then for a socialist economist to blame the private sector. Really? And by the way, when he says, I'm an economist, I know where this happened. Really? He's like a pseudo-economist. If he was a real economist, how could he be a socialist? You can't be a socialist and actually be an economist. The two are mutually exclusive. National capitalist profit-driven calculation to make. So the companies didn't. That's right. And we didn't they have the ventilators, the gloves, the masks, and all the rest. And there's no shorthand way of saying it. Private capitalism and the public health don't work well together the united states has four and a half why why doesn't public health and private capitalism work it works brilliantly together and need the hospitals are private hospitals and if they were less regulated they would have had more capacity indeed the masks that you did get and most people most people didn't die because of a lack of masks most people didn't die because of a lack of ppe they died because politicians made lousy decisions like sending them back to nursing homes. That's why they died. It's because it was a virus that was new and the treatment was uncertain. That's why they died. 
They didn't die because of lack of PP&E. Well, put it this way, most people didn't. So, uh, on the contrary, we got tons of PPE. We got tons of respirators even. Once the government stepped out of the way, once government were allowed to actually produce and create and build, there's no shortage of PPE right now. There's no shortage of, of, of ventilators. So the whole thing is just ludicrous to, to associate this with um, to associate with this with capitalism uh, as a problem. Capitalism would solve this problem. Indeed, where are the vaccines coming? Where are the new treatments coming? Where did this new treatment Trump just got? The, the antibody treatment coming? And there are hundreds of companies working on this all over the world. Motivated by a profit motive. Now, sadly, a lot of the money to fund all this is coming in through government, which is going to distort the market dramatically. And it's going to favor some treatments over others, some vaccines over others. If the market had worked, we would have gotten better, faster treatments for this than otherwise. Um, yeah, I mean, the companies are working on this. What's slowing us down, what's slowing us down is the FDA. I mean, how come Trump got the antibody treatment and I can't? If I get COVID, I want the antibody treatment. But no, you have to be special. Because the FDA is the gatekeeper. Half percent of the world's people. And we have 25% of the world's COVID cases. So 4.5% of the world people, 25% of the, of the COVID cases, or even deaths, I don't know what the number is. Why? Because of the private sector failed? Or because our government failed dramatically? Did our doctors fail? Did our hospitals fail? Is it because of a shortage of PPE? No. It's 100% because our government failed. And because it's a, you know, deadly disease that for some reason was more deadly in the U.S. But most of the reason for it is because of government policies. And COVID deaths. We're a rich country. We are. That is a... Because of capitalism, by the way. We're rich only because of whatever element of capitalism exists in our country and has existed for the last 200 years. A statistic that screams... Something fundamental is wrong. Yes, yeah, something fundamental is wrong. The role of government in our marketplace is way too large. The role of government in our healthcare system is way too large. And as a consequence, when governments do better, like they did in Taiwan, South Korea, even Germany, things go better. When governments do badly, like they did in the UK, in the United States, and other places, things go badly. I mean, holding everything else constant, other issues as well. But yeah, I mean, COVID is an example of government failure, not a failure of capitalism. Sorry, Pope. I mean, I don't know. Popes are supposed to be infallible. And yet, look how fallible they really are. Unbelievable. If a society with our capability has such a record. In the European countries, it wasn't done. Unemployment in Italy during the... So no, you switched on employment now. But note that in, um, in European countries, death rates in some countries are higher, some countries are lower, but generally death rates are in the same ballpark. European companies have done, have done as badly under COVID as we have, in spite of the fact that they have, in the UK, they have a, um, a, um, National Health Service, NHS, and yet they did just as badly as our hybrid, mostly government-run healthcare system did in the United States. Oh, Charanjit, thank you. Really appreciate that. Let's see what the question is. It looks like it's related. Um, great to listen to you. As the healthcare is slowly nationalized, it's important to do more shows and explain why everything bad in healthcare as a result of government regulations. For example, why hospitals don't publish prices for procedures, drug prices, and every year. I agree completely. And uh, later in the show, we're going to talk about insulin and drug pricing. Again, I talked about that a little while ago. We're going to talk about it again because I, I, think, I think it's people have, 
people don't present it right. Even free market people don't present it right. And it, it, it really, really, really upsets me. Um, all right. Let's see. Where were you? So you're shifting to the economy. You're shifting the economic response. Again, this is all under the framework of capitalism failed. The entire COVID period was less than it was a year before that when there was no uh, COVID. German unemployment went from 5% roughly in March to 6% roughly now. In short, in every major European country, they did not do what the United States did. They didn't throw tens of millions of people out of work, throwing them on unemployment adding to their losses of unemployment the unspeakable anxiety of wondering whether they'll ever have a job again. So no, um, so we have more unemployment than Germany. Why does Germany have less unemployment? Why did Germany's unemployment not skyrocket? Because Germany basically put everybody for the period of COVID under government payroll. Everybody. And yet, Germany spent less on stimulus as a percent of GDP than the United States did. I think other than Japan, we have spent the most on bailing out everybody than any other country. Now, it is true that Europe's welfare system, Europe's unemployment system, Europe's system for redistributing wealth is far, far more efficient than the American system. How is any of this related to capitalism? We distribute huge amounts of money. We bailed out companies. We bailed out small businesses. We bailed out individuals. In every respect, we acted like socialists. Granted, not very efficient socialists, but socialists nonetheless. So our unemployment is higher because we recognize the fact that people are not working. In Germany, they don't count the people as not working because the government is basically paying companies to pay their employees. So nobody got fired. But they're all on the government dole. So imagine if we took everybody who's on welfare in the United States right now, everybody who's getting unemployment insurance right now, and counted them as employed because they're employed by the government, they're getting a check. I mean, again, the dishonesty of how people, these people use numbers, and this will be a theme, is just disgusting, horrible. Whether the job they lost would be there when they went back yeah, looking horrible. for it, which we all know millions of them won't. We already know that. Um, and so they're all wondering, is the roulette wheel going to come down and point on me? Uh, it, to add anxiety to the worries about the illness, to the worries about... Oh, let's not have anxiety. We've got, a, we've, got a, we've got a pandemic raging around the world. Let's not worry about anxiety. Let's just print up as much money as needed to reduce everybody's anxiety so that they become, all of them, wards of the state because that will reduce the anxiety. We know that people who live off the welfare state have no anxiety. They, they, they live happily ever after. So let's make them all wards of the state. Anxiety will come down and... You know, the fact that in the future there's no economic growth, the fact that in the future taxes will go up dramatically on them, on their children, on their grandchildren, the fact that we're digging ourselves a hole of, uh, a hole of debt that uh, who knows how we can, the only way to pay it back is by eliminating economic growth in the future. Um, yeah, let's sacrifice the future. Talk about, you know, you, you mentioned earlier the fact that capitalists don't plan long term. Who does? Politicians. Yeah, politicians. They plan long term. They're so good at it. So good at it. So let's pin up lots of money today. Not worry about the future. Because we're planning long term. Right. I'm managing your children who can't go to school. Your distance. Why I can't mean, they go to school? That's a government decided they can't go to tell school. tell you why. They should have gone to In school. In Europe, the reaction was so much better. The Europe why is there so he much wants to produce 
Why is there just as much death in Europe as there is? Whoops, I skipped. And um, why is it the GDP in the United States actually dropped less than in Europe? Not by a lot, but less. Europe, from an economic perspective, put aside unemployment, GDP dropped a lot more than in the United States. But of course, he won't mention that because Europe is much closer to his socialist heaven than we are, even though we're quite close too. Would be there when they went back looking for it. And so they're all wondering, is the roulette wheel going to come down and point on me? Uh, skip ahead. And let me tell you why. In Europe, the reaction was so much better. Much better, huh? The European leaders, whether they're right-wing, left-wing, or in the middle, they know the following. Labor unions, socialist parties, communist parties, they're much stronger in Europe than they are in the United States, and that's been true for a long time. And everyone there knows, if you had dared throw tens of millions of working people out of their jobs, out of the security of their jobs, they wouldn't have gone home to watch TV. Well, but this is why, yeah, I mean, labor unions are legal in the United States, last I looked. Anybody could join a labor union. There's no restriction on having labor unions. There's no legal barriers to having labor unions if labor wants it. The reason we don't have labor unions in the United States is that labor figured out that they're better off without them. Labor figured out that they're better off without them. That's why labor unions have been declining steadily, dramatically over the last 50 years. Because we do better without them. And you will note, as a consequence of that, the U.S. economy is bigger, stronger, richer. He started out by saying how rich we are. Richer than any European country. I've mentioned the fact that European countries, if they were states, would be number 40 or fifth, uh, number 40-something in relative wealth. So, yeah, they have unions. So they have to coddle the so-called workers. And the consequence of that is slow economic growth, lower standard of living. They live in smaller homes. They drive smaller cars. They have less savings. They're not as rich as we are. Their middle class is poorer than our middle class. And we don't have capitalism, which we did. They would have gone into the streets and they would have shut down those economies way more totally than any pandemic could. Mm. And everyone there knew it. So here was the deal. Fact is, labor unions in Europe rarely strike. And they rarely strike because they're afraid. They're afraid of what happened in the United States. They have many, many more legal protections in Europe than uh, labor unions in the U.S. have. But they're also afraid of, of pissing off the, uh, the populace. Israel used to have the most powerful economic force in Israel used to be the labor union. It used to be the largest employer in the country. It used to be a socialist paradise where the workers owned the means of production. And they used to strike all the time. And it got to the point where the politics, because of that, voters voted in politicians who actually broke up the union and, and destroyed it or, or weakened it dramatically in terms of its power. And labor unions in Europe are afraid of that, terrified of exactly that. In Europe, the government will help you in your business, but you cannot fire anyone. That's right. All right. So that was... Um, that was uh, Richard Wolf, and 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 note the just the, the ludicrous nature of the whole thing. Um, Jennifer asks if Packman agrees with him. Yeah, I mean, I think he agrees with a lot of it. He doesn't agree completely, but he Packman is definitely on the left. He's not a socialist. He's not quite as left as uh, as uh, Richard Wolf would be. I think Kyle Kalinsky, who uh, who sh from whose show I actually ran this. Is uh, is more of a uh, of a leftist in that sense. So, you know, the left blames everything wrong on capitalism. Every problem is blamed on capitalism, and they have to invent stuff. They have to make stuff up. First of all, they have to make it make stuff up regarding whether the fact that we don't live under capitalism. They have to attribute failures of government to failures of markets. 
and then they make up their stats. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want, to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes but uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.